the integumentary system, the skin, and a few other things. We are going to be looking at today how the integumentary system works and its parts. So the first thing is its function. Its job, of course, is to protect you from the outside world and maintain homeostasis. Main job protection is your outside barrier. It's the thing that keeps you in and everything else out. That's its job. The way it maintains homeostasis, though, is that it controls your body temperature. When you get hot, you get flushed. When you get cold, you get chilled. It's changing the size of the blood vessels that are in your skin that releases heat. Then you, of course, have the loss of water. It stops that. You don't want to lose too much water. You dehydrate really fast. You're more water than the air around you is, so you're going to be losing it if you didn't have protection, and that's what your skin does. It has a lot of sensory organs, pain, temperature, touch, all this is there. It synthesizes biochemicals, vitamin D being the top component here, and it excretes a small quantity of waste. So you can get rid of waste through sweat through your skin. And it is made out of skin and accessory organs. Two layers of skin, and then we have an extra layer too. The first layer of skin is going to be the epidermis. It's the outermost layer. You touch it, you see it on a regular basis. It's what you scrub, what you clean, what you mess with. And it's composed of a stratified squamous. So it's got all these nice, neat little layers. Remember, they start off as cubes at the bottom and then become flatter as you get to the top. It's stratified squamous. <clears throat> the dermis is the inner layer. There's a basement membrane between these two. The dermis has lots of connective tissue, blood vessels, muscles, nerve tissues, blood, all that's there. And it's there to help nourish the cells. It's there to help maintain body temperature and do all those homeostasis things. Then you've got one more layer, and that's the subcutaneous layer. You may know this layer as the hypodermis. Hypo meaning below. Of course, epi means on top, and dermis is in the middle. Or subcutaneous, sub being below, cutaneous being skin. So it's below the skin. And this has a lot of loose connective tissue, adipose tissue, that binds your skin to the organs underneath and allows your skin to move around and be flexible. Also provides insulation. So if you look at the picture here, you've got at the top here, you have your epidermis, and this is the top of the epidermis, composed of dead cells. The epidermis goes on to this layer here. Notice that it is stacks, so that makes it a strata. Then you'll have your dermis, which actually is right here. This section is the dermis. I'm tracing along the base of the membrane right here. And then it comes down all the way across here. So that means that this section right here is also part of the epidermis. And it's got your melanocytes and a few other cells in there that help you out. The very, very bottom section here is the hypodermis, but it's also known as the subcutaneous layer, if you remember right. And all those little yellowy circle things are adipose tissue, connective tissue. And of course, inside your skin, you have your hair follicles, sebaceous gland, equine glands. We're going to talk about all these in a little bit, some nerves and blood vessels. Okay. Now, we're going to talk about a couple of shots. Now, you have the intradermal, subcutaneous, and intramuscular. Intra meaning going into. So the intradermal takes you into the dermis layer. Subcutaneous takes you just below into the subcutaneous region. And then the intramuscular goes into the muscle. And looking at what that looks like, you have your intradermal. Note that this is the dermis here. And it's going right into the dermal layer your dermis. Your subcutaneous is going to take you at 45 degrees and it's going to take you straight underneath the subcutaneous into this hypodermis layer. Right here. Then you have your intramuscular. Intramuscular is doing exactly what its name says. It's going into the muscle. It's got to be given at 90 degrees and it goes straight down into the muscle. 
if you think about little kids getting their vaccination shots, this is the one they tend to get. If you're getting a flu shot, this is the one they tend to get. And this is the one reason why they give little kids a flu shot or anybody a flu shot in the gluteal region is because the muscle is so large there, it's easy to get the needle into it and it doesn't hurt quite as much as trying to put it into a region with a smaller piece of muscle. So intramuscular. Subcutaneous tends to be for some of your more other common shots, drawing blood, things like that. And then the intradermal is for allergy tests as well. Coming here, you're looking here at a transdermal patch. <clears throat> transdermal patches have in the bottom here a membrane that is porous and allows this chemical to go across into the dermis. Now when they stick one of these on, they take the hair off, clean the oil up, and stick this straight onto your body. The section here keeps the medicine from leaking out, and the medicine is right here in the center. And this is a timed release. It works a little better than a shot, and it works better than taking antibiotics over a long period of time, because it constantly puts the medicine in at the same dosage all the time. Whereas like an antibiotic or something, you take it, and then you take it four hours again, your level in your body has gone down. So they're looking at making lots of medicines and stuff come in through a transdermal patch. Looking at the epidermis in specific, you have four to five layers depending on if you're looking at thin skin or thick skin. And we're going to look at them from deep to superficial. Okay, basal. Basal should tell you base right there. That is the base layer. It is at the bottom. So your new cells are made. You're going to push those oral cells right to the top. Basal layer. Spinosum is next. Granulosum. And these are just the layers as they go up, and you're getting more and more dead cells as you go. Ludicium, or lecidium, is only able to be found on a thick skin. And thick skin is a skin that doesn't have hair or stuff growing out of it. So your thick skin is on your hands, on the palms of your feet, your lips, some external genitalia. These areas allow for a lot more sensitivity. The top layer is stratocornum. And that is a very, very, very top layer. It's filled with dead cells. They got keratin. They're tough. They're waterproof. Note that keratin is a protein that just fills up the entire cytoplasm as it goes up. And we call that process keratinization. So keratinization is when the cell dies off and it gets filled up with keratin. And here, <coughs> looking at your layers, basal at the bottom. It's right here along this bottom edge is your basal layer. We're going along the basement membrane. These cells just travel right along this edge here, up and down. And these ridges provide fingerprints and other markings on you. So the basal layer is right up against it. And this is the corneum. Notice it's very clear. There's not much to see here. This, this is what you would touch if you touch somebody's arm is this piece of skin right here. And you have this whole layer here that is just protective, waterproofing, dead cells, keratin. That's it. And then you have your other layers running down through. The epidermal bits and pieces are produced new cells bounce with the loss of dead cells. So the more you lose cells, the more you're going to produce. And the area of the skin that's rubbed or pressured regularly causes calluses and corns. So these calluses and corns are due to the use of that area. That's how you can develop calluses. Melanocytes are another cell that is located inside this epidermis and it is what produces melanin. Melanin is what makes your skin color, hair color, eye color, etc. It's a protein. And it's down the deepest part of the epidermis and it travels throughout the epidermis. And then melanin protects you from ultraviolet radiation. That's its job. So if you look here, you can see we have a melanocyte right here, right next to the basement membrane. And then it's got these branches coming out of it. They just stick yourself right all along the inside of the epidermal layer, spreading the cell out very far. I'm tracing over the cells here. So the cell. Just keeps going and going and going. 
and then it's dropped little melanin drops into other cells to give them color. And so the more of this you have, the darker you are. And when you get a tan, you produce more of this material. Okay, so let's go a little deeper. Now we're going to look at the dermis. And the dermis is the boundary between the epidermis and the dermal layers. And you have this boundary. It's got the epidermal ridges and what they call dermal papillae. Papillae are like little mountains or little nipples of, that's what it's called, nipples of material, of skin cells, cells. The ridges protrude upward, papillae protrude outward, or inward and outward, sorry, and it causes your fingerprints, and everybody's fingerprints are unique. doesn't matter whether you're an identical twin or not, identical twin's fingerprints are also unique because you get your fingerprints by pushing them up against the inside of your mother, up against the inside of the uterus when you're inside, before you're born, you're touching the inside of the uterus and every time you touch you form a ridge or a papillae and they will create your fingerprints. And even identical twins don't touch the same section of the wall at the same time. Your dermis has a lot of connective tissue. It's got lots of collagen fibers, a lot of elastin fibers, it makes our skin tough and elastic. And that's why makeup, they try to include collagen in it because it adds to the toughness of your skin and keeps wrinkles from forming. <laughs> a few more guys floating around inside our epidermis. Got some blood vessels. When you need to cool off, they close when it's close to the epidermis. If you need to warm up, then they open up deeper down in the dermis. So warming up, deeper dermis ones open, top ones close off, you get that pale look. If you need to cool off, everything opens. All the ones up in the epidermis open, all the ones down the dermis open to try and get rid of some of the heat and so it's going to cool you off and you look flushed. Of course you have your motor nerve cells and your sensory nerve cells both in here as well. The sensory nerves are sending messages to the brain, telling them I touched something hot, that's cold, something brushed me, ouch, that hurt, whatever, it's sending that message to your brain. And then the nerve cells have messages come back, and you have those motor nerves that tell your muscles what to do. Oh no, I'm cold, I have to shiver. So it starts the muscles in the skin to start shaking and pinching and making goosebumps and things like that. Your subcutaneous layer, we also know as the hypodermis, so you need to know both names. It has connective tissue running parallel to the dermal cells. There's no basement membrane here. Your adipose tissue is an insulation. You got lots of maser blood vessels around here that supply skin and subcutaneous layer with nutrients, heat, whatever they need. 